And in fact, I was at a recent cancer conference and they showed the data on cancer being a preventable disease. What does that mean is right now, currently, as say if you take 100% of what incidences are occurring from cancer, 30% is from, 35 to 40% is from diet alone. 30% is from tobacco. 15 to 20% is from obesity. Another about 10 to 15% is uh, in, uh, in chronic infections like viruses, parasites, uh, bacterial infections. Uh, another 10% is environmental toxins. And only 5 to 10%, and now some of the data will even say less than 3%, is actually genetically related. Now what does that mean? Because it's a small amount, yet we hear it every day. Let's take breast cancer, for example. A lot of people before the last couple of years have been hearing about breast cancer testing. And there was a BRCA1 test and a BRCA2 test. Um, and a lot of people were getting these tests and when their tests were positive, they were trying to get preventative mastectomies to prevent them from actually getting the cancer. Unfortunately, what we now understand is that 98% of the women that have breast cancer did not carry those two genes. Okay, so a lot of women, unfortunately, took this test and got unnecessary surgeries. Well, we now know that there's 500 genes now, just of this last November, 500 genes that are now mapped out that are potential triggers for switches that turn on cancer cells. But we have to understand is that, just taking the BRCA1, BRCA2 example, only 2% of the women that had breast cancer had that. Now, what that means is that when they have that gene, it doesn't mean that they're going to get it. It just means that 70% have a likelihood that it'll turn off, but 30% have a likelihood that that gene will turn on. Now we have data that will show that certain diet and lifestyle behaviors can actually change that expression of that gene to off. You know, even when we look at our whole genetic um, genome, for example, the genome, only 8% is actually true uh, active DNA. Almost 92% of our genome, according to Oxford studies a few months ago, is, is junk DNA. It doesn't encode proteins. So if you take that 8% and then make that 100%, it's still a small amount, only 3%, that is actually genetically related. So genes, you know, what we understand is that genes are switches. And we used to think that, you know, let's take a card game. People used to think that oh, I was dealt this card. I have the breast cancer gene, I have the colon cancer gene, I have the prostate cancer gene. It's not the gene that you've been dealt. It's really how do you play the game? And now we know that we all have these genes. We all have potential risks. Some people have higher risks of those switches turning on than off. But we now know that we are actually putting the kind of the driving seat the, the, the patient themselves can actually determine how their gene, genes express. It's called epigenetics. So we now understand that diet, lifestyle, and even how we think changes and encodes DNA as we speak in real time. So these things are not set and are, are kind of set in stone. It's actually kind of like it's kind of like a code to a program. It's constantly being written over and over, and we just need to start writing the right type of code. Beautiful.